Hello, I'm Ian. And I'm Dom with the Awesome Nerds. Today we're going to be doing CNC milling for our drivetrain. First we'll start out with a drill bit, and then we'll end with a mill bit to round out the corners and to fill in the bearing holes. Our process today will take five different steps. Let's get started. Wait, but safety first. You may think it's dangerous two boys working alone in the mill, but we're always under the careful watch of our caring coach. This bad boy here is what we call a CNC mill, a computer numerically controlled milling machine, which basically is a robot. So we use robots to build more robots. To keep our piece of Delrin away from the vise, we use a piece of oak to lift it off from the vise bed. To mount our piece of oak to our piece of Delrin, we actually use very strong and very sturdy scotch tape. Alright, I'm Ethan with the Awesome Nerds and I'm going to be teaching you how to use Fusion 360. So, we have our part here and we're going to go up to this section. You normally start out in model, however we're going to go to cam. We have all these new buttons up here. We already have a setup for this, however we're going to make a new one because of what you're greeted with when you make a part in cam. If you go up and click the setup button, you will see a setup menu appear. We can select different types of operations. One thing to keep in mind is orientation. We use base orientation. Base orientation is when you have your middle finger pointing out, your index finger pointing up, your thumb pointing sideways, and your palm horizontal to the ground. Whenever we are making a part, we want it to be oriented in the base orientation. So with that known, we are going to go and change the orientation from model orientation to select z-axis and select x-axis. If we select z-axis, we'll be able to use a vertical line as the z-axis. This can be any vertical line. So if I select this edge line here, my Z is correct, it's on the correct axis. However, it needs to be flipped. If I go to flip Z axis, I can get that to be vertical. Now for X axis, the long side is this top side here. If we select this, we can flip our X axis. Now you can see we have achieved base orientation. Another thing we have to do is select an origin point. We like to pick the upper left corner because it's simple and easy to remember. If we go into the stock, we can say no additional stock. That way it focuses in on our part. We can then hit OK. That created a new setup for our part. G-code is the standard programming language for a CNC milling machine. Fusion 360 has the capability to take pathing and turn it into G-code. This makes it incredibly easy to use Fusion 360 on a CNC mill. To do this, we have several different options. Most teams will only need to use the 2D and drilling operations. If we go up to the drilling operations tab, we can start our first operation. So if we go up and click drilling, we can see that we have a 3D model of our spindle. We now have a new menu here. Now tool is a feature that you can use to access different tools. These screws here are number seven size screws. So if we go to select tool, we see we already have one here. However, for new people who are just starting, you will not have access to this, so you will have to create one. So you go up to the new mill tool button. If you go into the cutter options, you can select the type of drill bit. For our main uses, we use flat end mill and drilling bit. If we select drilling bit, we can see that we have various different options. Many of these options are irrelevant for most teams. However, you will want to change the diameter to whatever your hole is. For this part, we have a number 7 size hole, which is a .201 inch bit. Once we're satisfied with that, we can click OK. You can see that we now have it in our menu. We can then click OK on that, and we can see that our spindle has updated. We can also check the feed and speed menu. What this will do is it'll figure out in the code how fast you want it to go and how fast you want it to go into the material. 
For drilling operations, we set our RPM to 500, our surface rate to 60, our plunge feed rate to 60, and our attract rate to 60. It can't be perfect, but it should get you pretty close. Another thing you want to do for drilling operations is have selected faces. For this one, we only have three faces. This one, this one, and this one. After that's done, you can go into the Heights menu. A lot of these are good just based off of the default. However, there's one set that you'll want to do on drilling operations which is unique to it only. At the bottom height menu, you can select Drill Tip Through Bottom. As you can see in the side view, the bit goes all the way through the material. By default, Fusion will make you go all the way into the pole and all the way out. This can be problematic seeing as how it causes a lot of stress on the bit and the machine itself. What we do is select Cycle Menu, Cycle Type. Instead of drilling rapid out, we can do Deep Drilling. This is also known as pecking. This will peck the material and create a very fine hole. After this, we need to start contouring our part. To do this, we go up to 2D Settings, 2D Contour. Then we want the contour of our part. To do this, we select the bottom most face. For this, we select this line around our part. We then need to update our tool. We can go to Select Tool. We then pick Quarter Inch Flat. For regular milling operations, we always want to set the bottom height 50 thousandths of an inch lower than the normal bottom height. This allows for a clean cut. A couple other settings on this. We want to make sure we use roughing passes and multiple depths. This creates smooth cuts. The finish only at final depth is important because it allows the tool bit to only go around the, the part once. This will save you a lot of time. We can also hit smoothing for a smoother product. We also want to do 2D features like these bearing holes here. We can use the 2D pocket setting, select the outline of our bearings. We could even do countersinking. We can go into passes, uncheck stock to leave. This will leave stock on your part. If you're doing anything precision wise, you don't want that selected. Once multiple depths and smoothing are selected, we can hit OK. This will generate a tool path for our 3D model. If we click Setup 2, we can do two things now. We can go into the Simulate option, and it'll also pop up a menu here. If we select Stock, now we see this green box around our part. This is the Stock box, which we selected at the beginning of this. We can then play this to see how our stock is going to be machined. Let's speed this up. After we have that done, we can click Close on the Simulate tab, go back up to Actions, and click Post Process. This will allow us to create the G code to run the CNC mill. We can change a lot of settings here, such as the file folder we want to output to, and the program number. If you have a CNC milling program, you can then drop that code onto that program and you can easily run it and get the part machined in a matter of minutes. Here's some footage of the program we use, Mach 3. As you can see, it's executing the G-code at a steady pace. This program has a wide variety of tools to help you CNC. The window in the top right hand corner of the program shows what's happening currently as the part goes through the CNC process. That's enough Fusion 360 talk for one day, let's move on to the actual milling. The first step in our CNC milling process is drilling. We do this part first because it's the only part we are going to use a drill bit for. After we drill our three holes, we will then detach the drill bit and replace it with a mill bit. Let's switch over to a different angle to view the rest of the process. In order to start milling out the outer edges, we need to install a mill bit. 
Once we have our mill bit installed, we can turn on the machine and begin milling. As you can see, the CNC mill easily creates a smooth outer edge. An interesting thing to note is that it's rarely the mill bit that moves, it's the platform that moves. Now it's time to mill those bearing holes. This is definitely one of the most messiest steps in our process because the mill bit goes deep into a bunch of material all at once. In addition to the bearing holes, we mill bearing countersinks. Finally, we get to face the surface. We go row by row from the top down, milling all the excess material we do not need. You can still get these parts to turn out the same if you do these steps in a different order. However, we do it in this order because it seems to be timely and efficient. And that was our CNC milling video guys, hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments or concerns, please feel free to leave a comment. We've also got tons of other cool resources on our channel, so check us out. You may think it's dangerous, two boys working alone in the mill. We're working with the constant supervision of our coach. <laughs> <laughs> Did it look okay? No, no because the camera didn't. She tried to turn and the camera just. <laughs> <laughs>